What's up you guys, my name is Aubrey and this is my channel and today I wanted to talk about California and Prop 22. Now I did a video about this a few weeks ago talking about what Prop 22 was, the benefits, the cons, and how this would affect you and the gig economy if you live in California. Now Proposition 22 was up for vote on Tuesday on election day and it did pass and what this means is that people who drive for services like Uber or Lyft will continue to be classified as independent contractors rather than employees. Now the reason why this is significant is a number of different reasons and whether or not this is considered a good thing or a bad thing would really depend on you and your outlook on this entire situation. Now the benefit of being an independent contractor is of course the flexibility that comes along with it. It's the ability to be able to work when you want, how you want to, not having to report to an individual boss or to work a nine to five. There are a slew of different benefits that come along with being an independent contractor. In fact, I've spent most of my career as an independent contractor and I can vouch personally how great it can be. Now the reason why this was considered on the table is number one, a lot of big corporations like Lyft and Uber use independent contractors as a way to pay less taxes. The tax structure for employees versus independent contractors is quite different and oftentimes companies will use independent contractors as a way to save on taxes. Additionally, one of the reasons why this was on the table to begin with was to provide independent contractors or Uber and Lyft drivers with the same benefits as an employee would get. Things like overtime pay, things like healthcare and work workplace benefits. Now, the problem with this is, is that yes, healthcare, workplace benefits, overtime, all of this sounds really great in theory, but the problem is once you start putting it into execution. And if you start restricting a Uber or Lyft driver's hours, if you start applying the same restrictions that you would get if you're a taxi driver or a truck driver, that's when this entire situation can get a bit messy and can become less advantageous for the driver. So in my personal opinion, I do feel as though this is a good thing. But now that Uber and Lyft drivers are officially independent contractors in the state of California, that begs the question of is Uber and Lyft still a side gig that's worth pursuing in California and around the entire world as a whole? So that's what I want to discuss now. But before we dig into the numbers of gig work and the sustainability of the gig economy as a full-time job, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, Cover. Now, Cover is a financial safety net for gig workers, and why this tool is so useful to gig workers and the gig economy is exactly why Prop 22 was even brought to the table to begin with. Aside from taxes, one of the reasons why Prop 22 was brought to the table is to allow gig workers to have some benefits along with the gig economy. And now Prop 22 was voted in, so gig workers are not employees, so what is there left for gig workers to take advantage of? And that's where Cover can come in. Cover can provide some of the financial benefits that we have grown accustomed to in our nine to five. Things like sick leave and paid time off, things like advanced pay if you need it in the case of emergency, as well as access to a legal team and bookkeeping services and medical and telehealth professionals, which you can have access to 24 hours a day. I know for me as a gig economy worker, I don't have traditional health insurance. I don't have a lot of the traditional benefits that you get with the nine to five, but Cover allows for me to have some peace of mind that if I need to speak to a medical professional, I can. If I need access to a legal team, I have it at my disposal and if I need access to sick leave or paid time off I can access those funds at any time. Cover is an excellent tool for any gig worker and it starts at just seven dollars a month. If you follow the link in my description below that will give you one free month of Cover, no strings attached, no contracts need to be signed and you can see if Cover is for you. So thank you Cover for sponsoring this video. So now that the future of the gig economy is less in question due to the fact that Prop 22 did pass now begs the question of is the gig economy still worth pursuing and is this still something that could replace your nine to five. Now, whenever you're answering that type of question, there are so many factors that come into play. There's the factor of what gig are you taking part in because driving for Uber or driving for Uber Eats or working with Turo or doing freelancing, all of these things have drastically different earning potential. For example, I know a lot of people who are making six figures doing freelancing. I don't know if I can say the same thing for Uber Eats. The other thing is accessibility to tools in order to complete the gig work. For example, if you don't have a car, then obviously Uber Eats or Uber is out of the question, you're probably gonna have to do something different. Now, the other thing that's important to take into mind is where you live. Cities and where you're located or where you drive heavily dictates how much you can make. You see, a study done by Business Insider showed that the average Uber and Lyft driver, drive share driver, makes 
cents per hour, and that is as of 2019. But this will fluctuate quite heavily depending on where you're located. For example, in California and cities like San Francisco and LA, that hourly rate goes closer to that $30 mark, whereas in smaller cities, it goes down to like $10, if not a little bit lower than that. But on average, across the entire United States, it is $17.21. Now, once you calculate this hourly rate to 40 hours a week, 52 weeks out of the year, that comes out to a salary of $35,796. But the important thing to take into account is the cost of doing gig work. And this is something that I made in a video a couple of weeks ago, is the fact that doing gig work costs money. And whenever you're driving a car, there are, of course, costs that need to be taken into account. Things like oil changes, cleaning the car, gas, as well as tires. All of these costs can add up quite significantly. And that $35,000 price point, that $35,000 annual wage, can quickly dip below that $30,000 mark simply by wear and tear of the vehicle. But wear and tear aside, the answer of whether or not 35k a year working for Uber Lyft, doing it on your own time, whether that's worth it is really up to you and depending on kind of what your expectation with the gig economy is. The average annual wage in the United States is around $50,000. Depending on where you look and what source you're looking at, it's a little lower than that, it's sometimes a bit higher than that, but that average middle mark is about $50,000. So even with working 40 hours per week, putting in that you know full-time job status with Uber or Lyft, you are still making a substantially lower amount than you would be at an average traditional nine to five. So I think that the real question isn't, is the gig economy worth it? I think that the actual question is, is the gig economy worth it to you? And I've mentioned it before in other videos and I'll mention it again, is that the answer to that question is heavily dictated by what you're currently doing and how much your time is valued at. If you have a corporate nine to five job and the cost of your living is extremely expensive, so you're living in large cities like New York, like LA, like Dallas, Texas, then maybe driving for Uber and Lyft might not be worth it because there are simply other things that you could be doing with your time that are much more lucrative. But if you are somebody who is a full-time student, if you're somebody that's working in a retail store, if you're somebody that's working in the fast food industry or something like that, then absolutely driving for Uber or Lyft could be a great way to get into a higher paying career. Now lastly, something that I really would like to talk about is that in my mind, I think that the really great thing about the gig economy isn't the gig economy itself, but the purpose that it serves. I don't view the gig economy, whether you're looking at it from a freelance perspective or Turo or Uber or Lyft or DoorDash, whatever the case is, I don't look at any of these services as the end goal. I don't see going into any of these services as being your lifelong career. Instead, I think that where these services and where the gig economy really has a great place in the world is a means to an end. For me, I use the gig economy as a way to make more money whenever I really needed it. And I've continued doing Turo because of the fact that the platform works so well for me. But I think the same could be said for any gig economy service out there. I don't think that it's a lifelong career path. I don't think that it should be your end goal. But I absolutely think that it's a valuable tool that can help you get to your end goal. Whether it be providing you with investment capital for a business you want to start or investments you want to buy or property you want to buy, whatever the case is, I think that the gig economy is best suited as a way to make extra money, not necessarily to make money alone. And that's where I think that the value in the gig economy really is, to help people get to that next step in earning and that next step in the career, not to be their only path for their career. But you guys, I wanted to make this video because I do think that Prop 22 passing is a fairly big deal. I think that it sets a precedent for other states and I think it sends a message as to what gig workers want for themselves because at the end of the day, Prop 22 more than anything affects gig workers more than it affects the companies and more than it affects government leaders and just the general public. So it is a big deal for gig workers that it passed and hopefully you guys view it as a good thing as well. But with that being said, I would love to hear your thoughts, so make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. And I'll see you guys in the next video.